Education plays a pivotal role in a country's economy. Without education, doctors would be unable to treat patients, architects could not design houses, and kids would not be able to read. Globalization has majorly impacted education throughout the world. It forces schools to be more globally aware and engage in the world outside of their classroom. The standards of education strongly compare in the countries of Finland, America, and Russia. But before we dive into this topic, it is necessary to find how globalization affects education. In the words of David L. Hudson, Jr., globalization in education is a principal instrument in awakening the child to cultural values. Globalization in education was driven by the technological changes and the path of scientific discovery around the world. Now, how do the standards of education compare in the globalized countries of America, Finland, and Russia? Let's compare. Each country believes all children should have equal opportunity at receiving a quality and free education. In all three countries, preschool is free of charge. The range of attendance of children that attend preschool in each of these countries is over 99%. Each country, each country believes all children under school age have a subjective right to early childhood education and care. Past preschool, each country similarly has three stages of education. Primary general education or elementary school, basic general education slash middle and beginning of high school, and secondary complete general education or 11th and 12th grade. The overall basic education in Finland and Russia is ages 7 through 16, whereas in the U.S. it's ages 6 through 18. The one contrast is in Russia and Finland, at the end of grade 10, it is required to take a placement test to decide if one qualifies for vocational school. In Russia and Finland, once a student reaches vocational school, they are taught basic skills for the exercise of their profession. Whereas in the U.S., one continues without placement until graduation. As stated on the National Finnish Education website, the objective of basic education is to support people's growth towards humanity and ethically responsible membership of society and to provide them with the knowledge and skills needed in life. This statement could easily be attributed towards Russian and American education. Each student in each country is expected to leave school with the wide, global context of the world. Nowadays, standardized testing in, in countries that offer this luxury Scores are compared within a variety of countries. These countries' competition to up uphold the number one spot in overall achievement is thriving more than ever. Each country has also, set a, has, has also a set school year of around 34 weeks. In Russia, Finland, and America, a basic curriculum is set for each grade, but the boards of education in each country gives freedom for teachers to mold a curriculum based off the general one set. In Russia, the education standards are set by colleges slash universities under auspices of the ministry. Finland has a similar board, but the U.S. school curriculums are set by the state slash national government. Each country teaches humanities and social sciences to help extend their students' awareness of the world by opening them to thought, action, and creativity. All three countries strive to teach their students the knowledge of, their world, of the world religions, cultures, economies, and global issues. Globalization has also helped to incorporate learning a second language as a core class. More than 50% of students worldwide are required to take a foreign language at some point in their education career. Now, on to country's rankings. Finland tops number 5 in overall achievement in education, whereas Russia takes the number 13 spot and America lies at 14. Finland has been ranked in the top 5 spots for the past 4 years, whereas Russia and America have stayed in the top 20. Many experts attribute Finland's success to the fact that the national Finnish education system has decided that no child should be, should be given homework. When this law was set in place, children's testing scores shot up, whereas in Russia and America, Homework is still handed out and testing scores have stayed the same. The total budget spent on each education is 11.1 billion in Finland, 20 billion in Russia, and 1.3 trillion in the U.S. The reason the U.S. spends so much is because the diversity rate in the U.S. is so much higher than in Finland and Russia. Because of this diversity, when you place a student who needs more time learning, an example, a non-native English speaker or one with a disability, with a student who needs less time learning and they are expected to perform the same rate, it is a recipe for failure. The U.S. puts more money into their public education system to help create programs and hire more teachers to help fix this economic gap. Another scenario that compares is in Finland, the grading system is 1 through 5, or unsatisfactory, pass, satisfactory, good, and excellent. In Russia, it's 1 through 8, or B through E, and in America, it's A, B, C, D, and F. As stated by Fairleigh Dickinson University, Globalization links individuals and institutions across the world with unprecedented interconnection and immediacy. Globalization education helps countries like America, Finland, and Russia find a common ground connection to unite them all together. Globalization also helps students to communicate in languages beside their native, work in cross-cultural teams, and to assess information derived from sources all around the world. 
Without globalization, children's minds would not be as open to the opportunities our schools teaches them about the world around them. Globalization is a dominant force that positively widens the minds of students around the world. Yeah. Sararo, you know what it is, right? Who a Ricky 